Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop and welcome to episode 5 of my Ask Matt series where I answer broader topic questions suggested by you, the viewer. In this episode, we're going to be talking about my workbench and I'm going to start out by talking about the rough measurements and the different vices and the work holding options and then I'll get into how I built it. So let's get started. So to get started, the total length of the bench is 87 inches. Uh, the width is almost 24 inches wide. Each individual slab, or each of the slabs here, are both 11 inches wide, or close to that, and the gap in the middle is about 1 and 7 eighths, around there. The total thickness of the bench is 4 and 5 eighths inches thick, and then the total height is 33 inches high. When I'm in my shop wearing my shoes, I'm about 5'7", so I'm a little bit on the shorter side. Now, the nice thing about building your own bench is you can make it to any dimension you want, especially the height, so you can customize the height of the bench to be exactly what you need for your actual height, which is really nice. I have my bench outfitted with the Benchcrafted hardware. I have both a tail vise and a leg vise. Let me take you through each of those vices and show you what kind of work holding options they both provide. So the tail vise works primarily by using these little dogs in the tail vise and in the bench to pinch things between. So if I wanted to plane this board, for instance, I could put it between dogs and my bench, crank down on the tail vise, it's a little bit there, and this board is not going anywhere. So now I can actually plane on this or do whatever I want in this fashion. That's pretty handy. The other really handy thing here with the tail vise I don't do very often because I have the leg vise, is you can actually clamp things vertically in here as well. So that might be handy if you need to work on the end grain here. Uh, maybe do some sawing or anything like that. Another option there. Okay, the leg vise is really nice if you want to clamp something vertically. Like that. Or you want to clamp something maybe horizontally like this. Or even a longer board like this to work on the edge. Now the thing that I like about this vise a lot is how smooth it is. You can see I can just throw this board in here, give it a spin, maybe give it another quarter turn, and this board is completely locked in now. It's just not going to go anywhere. This thing has a lot of grip. I have the version of the hardware kit that uses the crisscross, which is this little X piece down in here that keeps the jaw and the bench parallel the whole motion of the, uh, the travel. The other version has a pin block down here where you have to remove a pin and put it in different places to keep those two things parallel. Again, the chop and the side of the bench. But the crisscross allows you to just crank it out all the way without having to adjust it. Now I use this a lot when I'm sawing. So if I'm doing, um, if I'm sawing dovetails for instance, I'll have a board clamped vertically in here. Or if I want to plane the edge of a board, I have the option to do that here as well in the leg vise. Now down here I have a sliding dead man, and this is really handy if you want to clamp something really long in the leg vise. You can put it in the vise and then, I don't have any pins, but you can put a pin into one of these holes and that allows you to support that workpiece through the, a much longer length. Um, I don't really do any kind of edge jointing on my bench, so I don't use that very often, but it's there if I need it. And that just slides back and forth on this cool little uh, V-track. And on this end, I have holes drilled for storing my holdfasts. Now down here on the base itself, on the shelf, I have a whole bunch of uh, bowl blanks, um, which adds a little more mass to the bench, and it also gets them kind of off the floor and out of the way. I don't really have anywhere else to put them. Um, and down here, I keep my strop for sharpening my chisels and planes, as well as the honing compound, or the stropping compound. And I also keep a uh, brush for brushing off the bench whenever it gets dirty. I have a few jigs down here as well that I use pretty often and probably the most often thing I use is this piece of plywood. This is my backer for I'm doing any kind of chopping. I put this down on the bench if I'm doing like a, um, a dovetail for a drawer and I chop right on here instead of chopping right onto the bench. So it's a sacrificial backer for the bench. I use that all the time. Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is the gap between the two um, slabs. A lot of people ask, you know, why, why is it a good idea to have two slabs and a gap in between? 
And really the answer is flexibility. You have a lot more flexibility in the things you can do with your bench. Um, in the position it is right now, it's great as a tool holder so you can set your tools in there as you're working so they don't roll off the bench and they're really easy to grab. Um, and like this, the gap isn't really, doesn't really get in the way because it's recessed enough where it's not going to get in the way if like a board is here. And nothing's really going like, to fall down in there either. Uh, that's one position. The next position is if I lift it out of here and slide it over a little bit. Now it's raised and that's really handy as a little planing stop. So you can take a board, butt it up against there, and now you can plane this way, which is handy as well. Now the most useful part of this is if you want to put a clamp in the middle of your bench. So if I wanted to clamp a workpiece or something out here in the middle of the bench, that's easy enough with the split top because you can just drop your clamp down there and clamp it right there. So now you have a clamp in the middle of the bench and that's actually been really handy a few times. Now, I don't clamp through the middle of the bench that often but when I want to it's really handy to have that option available. I usually just leave the gap stop in there and I just use it as a tool holder which is really nice because I tend to lose my tools off the edge of the bench all the time. Now one more work holding option I do have here is to use a hold fast and these are really really handy because they allow you to clamp something to your bench really quickly. The hold fast is just a piece of bar stock that's bent with a little flap spot on it and it goes in a hole in your bench. I only have one right now because I've only drilled one so far so I'm not sure what, where I want to put them all. But it slides right in there and you just hit it with a hammer or a mallet and now your workpiece is locked in place. Let me hit it a little harder. There we go. Now it's really locked in place. <laughs> and to release it is pretty easy, just smack the back. There you go. So I use that a lot when I'm doing any chopping. This is where I sit when I do all my dovetailing. So I'll have my, um, my board that I'm working on clamped to the bench with the hold fast. And then I'll be up here sitting here chopping. So I use that a lot. These things are really handy, really, really handy. So now let's talk about how I built this thing. <laughs> that was quite the process. The overall project took me about 60 to 80 hours. I was keeping track in the beginning, but I kind of fell off after a while, but I'm guessing it was somewhere in that range. It's definitely a big project and it definitely takes a lot of work, but I think it's absolutely worth it because this is such an amazing bench and it allows me to do um, so much more than I used to be able to. So like a lot of my projects, the wood for this lumber was something that I was involved in milling myself. Now the tree that this is made out of was a silver maple tree, which falls into the soft maple category. And that log was 17 feet long and uh, about two and a half feet in diameter. So it was a pretty hefty log. And the boards that I got for that were two inches thick and they were um, between 18 and 20 inches wide and 17 feet long. So they were just giant, giant boards. Um, I ended up cutting them in half just because I couldn't really dry a 17 foot long board because uh, I had nowhere to put that. So I cut them in half and then I dried them myself in my basement. So when it was time to build the bench, I had ordered the Benchcrafted Hardware Kit and I had to go dig out the boards from my stack of lumber and of course I had them on the bottom <laughs> because, you know, that's where all the things you want is always on the bottom. So I dug them out and I brought them out and I started cutting them up into strips, which was a lot of work. My wife helped me carry them out and start cutting them up. Uh, it took a few hours just to get those things cut into strips. This is just, just talking about the top here, just to make enough strips and lumber for the top. So the hardest part about making the top is the front slab by far. There's a lot going on here. On the end cap, it gets a tenon, and then the front laminate piece gets a dovetail that goes into that end cap as well. You also have this dog strip here that has all the dog holes in it. Um, this takes a lot of time. I've probably put about eight hours into making square dogs, whereas if you were to do round holes, it would probably take you about an hour. These are really simple to make too. They just have a little piece of wood on the end here that acts as a little spring so that when you put them into the slot, they stay where they are kind of raised at. So that's really nice. So the other thing that's going on with this front laminate is the actual tail vise. And that thing has a pretty complicated installation, or at least it seems complicated when you haven't done it before. <laughs> There's a lot going on there as well. The there's rails underneath there that need to be recessed into the bottom of the bench and you need to create a channel for that mobile dog block to go back and forth in. 
So there's a lot of work involved in installing that tail vise, but again, um, once you've done it once, that's the kind of the unfortunate thing about making a bench like this is you don't really do it more than once. <laughs> so although I can do it pretty quickly the second time through, I'll probably never have to do it again. <laughs> but anyway, once I got the tail vise installed, I can start working on the base. So all my base pieces are three and a half inches thick. That is the uprights and all the stretchers, they're all three and a half inches thick. I had a lot of extra st um, stock, little cutoffs and things that I just glued together to make all those pieces. I figured I might as well just use them all and make the bench a little heftier. Um, all the base pieces are all drawboard together. They have a peg in them and there's a little bit of glue but that peg is really all that's holding them all together. And it's a really, really strong structure um, down there. <laughs> the top of the uprights of the legs have a little tenon on them and they go up into a small mortise into the underside of the bench top. Um, there's four of them, one on the front and back. Um, that tenon is I think maybe half an inch or three quarters of an inch long so it's not very long, it's really just there to add some strength for um, pressure coming this way across the bench. Now besides the tenon, there are two lag bolts that go up through the top rail of the base into the underside of the top itself. And that just helps keep it all down to the, to the base. So I don't have the tenon glued, so if I want to take this apart, I can. The whole base is glued together. There is a way to make it so that the whole base comes apart as well. But it's really not that big of a thing. It's probably, I think it's only like four and a half feet long anyway. So it's not that big of a thing if you wanted to take it apart to move it. So I didn't feel it was necessary to make it uh, come apart. Once I got the base built, I could work on the leg vise. Now the leg vise itself is a lot simpler to install than the tail vise, but it's still a lot of work. The, the biggest thing here is that the crisscross hardware that I'm using has a channel that needs to be routed in the chop and the, um, the leg as well. So that needs to be all removed and cleaned out and then that crisscross needs to be installed. Um, the other thing I did with the chop is I used wood that I had milled myself from a tree that I had salvaged here in Minneapolis. And I had these short, like two foot long pieces of 12 quarter that I milled up. I had had no project in mind for them and they've been sitting around for a few years. So I figured this would be a good project for that. So I used part of that log for the, the, um, the, uh, the, the end cap and I used the other part for the chop. Now I had originally thought the stock for the chop was going to be long enough but with the crisscross, you need a chop that goes all the way down to the floor. So the stock I had for this was maybe six inches too short. So I was thinking about using a different piece of wood for the chop, but instead of doing that, I just lengthened it with a sliding dovetail. And I used an offcut from the bench top that had a cool um, like bark thing going on, because uh, I thought that looked pretty cool. So the chop is walnut, and the bottom part is maple, and they're connected with a sliding dovetail that is pegged. And I thought that turned out really nicely. And with the chop, you can really do any kind of um, ornamentation or detail work you want in it. I just added a simple taper to both sides because I thought that looked pretty good. So after all that time you invested in this, you'd probably want to baby this thing. Um, I don't. It's a workbench. It's here for me to work on and get things done on. Um, if it gets dinged up, it gets dinged up. That's part of the whole, you know, workbench life. <laughs> so I don't really, I'm not gentle with it at all and it's holding up really, really well. So if you're on the fence about maybe a soft maple or a softer species being too soft for a bench, um, I think this is a good real life example of how durable it really is. So this style of bench is called the split top rubo. And a lot of people ask me where I got the plans for it to build it. Um, there are some really, really detailed plans on the Benchcrafted website. They're the company that makes and sells these hardware kits. They have a really long document that goes through the whole bench building process, including the installation of their hardware. Now I went a different route. I am a member of the Wood Whisperer Guild, and one of the guild builds a few years ago was building this bench. So Mark does a really great job of kind of exactly walking you through the whole process, step by step of how to build this bench in video. And he also has plans available too with that video. Um, that's the way that I went. It was a lot easier to watch those videos because he's really good at explaining everything and it saved me a lot of time trying to figure out exactly what was supposed to happen. I'll leave a link to the Wood Whisperer Guild in the description. That link is an affiliate link, so if you go over there and you buy uh, the plans for this bench or any of the other projects, they'll be helping the channel out, so I greatly appreciate that. Uh, I'll also leave a link to the Benchcrafted website so you can take a look at the hardware. I will warn you though, it is very pricey, but I think if you see it in person, you can kind of understand why they ask the price that they do. It's really well built and it's very, very high quality. 
Um, as always, if you have any more questions about the bench or anything else here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. If you have any more ideas for any upcoming ass mats, please leave those as well. And as always, until next time, happy woodworking.